Rose Bowl champion Tony Lippett joins the show. We're going to talk about this upcoming reunion, Harlan Barnett, Mark D'Antonio. But first, just got to clear a little more things up about the Mel Tucker fallout. And then Noah Kim, Offensive Player of the Week. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College. That's all one word for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Welcome to another episode here of Locked On Spartans, your team in green and white every single day through the good times and the bad times. And speaking of that, I just want to thank anyone that watched or listened yesterday. That is our most viewed show here on Locked On Spartans. Uh, it might be our most listened to on the podcast as well, but. <laughs> Woo! What a what a topic to have sort of the top of the charts there. But no, genuinely want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. If you ever want to reach out, lockedonspartans at gmail.com or hey, if you're on Twitter, Sheehan underscore sports as well. We're going to kick off today's show with shining a light on the student athletes here. There are two that we're going to highlight because believe it or not, I, I know it's a, a faint rumor Michigan State actually played a game over the weekend. Uh, I know, crazy. It's almost like you never heard of it. Um, and in that game, Noah Kim, 18 of 22, passing 292 yards and a school record 15 straight completions to end the game, 81% completion. And that got him Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honor. So have to shout out Noah Kim. Strong start to the season for him. Two games over 250 passing yards so far. Uh, the last quarterback to win Big Ten Weekly Honors, Peyton Thorne, after the Miami win in 2021. And the last Michigan State player to win Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, Kenneth Walker, after that nice little game at Spartan Stadium against Michigan where he scored five times. That's right. So it has been. Well, a, a full season between these honors, but here you go. And I just want to point out Nathan Carter, because not only did he get 111 yards, three touchdowns, but he also scored himself one engagement over the weekend. That's right. He got engaged over the weekend. So as if his season wasn't starting hot enough, the good news just keeps rolling in for Nathan Carter. So yeah, just had to shout that out and uh, on the off chance that he's listening. Congrats, Nathan. There we go. He was on the show once and he was an awesome guy. So yeah, definitely happy to see that for him. Now, let's get back to the, the story of the week. We're not going to avoid it much longer here. The whole Mel Tucker saga. And you can get all of my opinions on yesterday's show. We actually dropped two YouTube videos, one episode on the podcast. But that, I have not changed my opinion much, if at all, ever since those dropped. However, I do have to clear up some things. Yesterday, we started the show saying that Mel Tucker was suspended with pay. I apologize for that. At the time of recording, those were the reports out there. And later on, it comes out that, no, he is without pay. So I just wanted to clear that up. My bad. I apologize for that. And then also something interesting here from Dan Murphy of ESPN. Of course, he was the one that first dropped the story late Saturday night or Sunday morning, however you want to classify it. Two tweets from Dan Murphy. Important distinction on the Mel Tucker suspension. After tonight's press conference, MSU's leadership knew there was a complaint made against Mel Tucker in late December. They did not know any details until last night a school spokesperson confirmed. And if you think that's unusual, it's not. Dan Murphy goes to write on. Title IX and sexual misconduct experts say this is proper trauma-informed protocol for how to handle this kind of complaint. Tucker's bosses should not have known the details during an open case. So in the wee hours of, again, Saturday night or Sunday morning, when we're all learning about what's going on with Mel Tucker from that USA Today piece that really went into detail about the investigation, that, that was Michigan State's first time hearing about the actual details as well. So I commented that it was a little bizarre that he wasn't suspended earlier on. We could still have that debate, but that adds more clarity. It's not like the athletic department knew exactly what was going on there. So just that was a nice little insight to have uh, from Dan Murphy here. Now, I will say this. Really wish that was made more clear during the press conference. Um, like, I, I, if I'm Alan Haller, I, I'm making sure every single person in that room is told at least five times that we had no idea what the details were during this because that, that was a big storyline. And 
deservedly so with Michigan State's track record, uh, a cry as to why he hasn't been suspended, but no details there. So, uh, okay, again, that debate that amongst yourselves. We're going to move on here, but that is some good insight there. Now, we're going to talk a little more about Mark D'Antonio coming back because during that press conference, where only three questions were asked, I'm sure that was strategized that way, that not a lot of questions get answered anyway. Mark D'Antonio was asked about, and Alan Haller said that Mark D'Antonio picked up the phone and said, I will do anything to help this program, essentially, and also that the players were fired up. Um, and let's just move on to this Mark D'Antonio thing. I I, I got to appreciate the timing, albeit under not great circumstances. I, I do appreciate the timing that he's coming back for the Rose Bowl reunion this Saturday. Of course, we're going to talk about that here in a little bit with Tony Lippett, but I mean, I, th the stadium, I think, will still be buzzing. Uh, there was a little bit of chatter of like, oh, man, what's the rest of the season going to look like in the bleachers? And Mad Dog wrote an email, again, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com, that I think sums it up just brilliantly. The players should not be collateral damage. It can, uh, Sorry, I can only do one thing to prevent that. Attend games and cheer for them no matter the result. Also goes on to say he wasn't sure about renewing season tickets, but now in the face of all this, like, yeah, he's going to support his guys. And that is... Really what I'm hearing, too, from a lot of Spartan fans. I expect Saturday's game to be absolutely electric inside of Spartan Stadium here. Um, now, with the Mark D'Antonio returning to the sideline news, uh, there, there are some, again, I'm not going to paint with too broad of a, a stroke here, but some Michigan fans are uh, a little triggered by the reappearance of the man that has slayed them for the better part of a decade here. They are not happy with Mark D'Antonio coming back. Uh, yeah, I started... Monday morning with uh, with a tweet about basketball, actually, because, you know, they're going to have a postseason tournament in Las Vegas for teams that didn't make the NCAA tournament. I said, hey, good news for the team in Ann Arbor. And then Jim Simon commented back, hey, do you think D'Antonio will continue to cover up sexual assault as he did in the past, or will he stop doing that? And that's been the rhetoric for a few, again, a few Michigan fans, but very loud Michigan fans. They are a noisy bunch over there. And look, from Jim's point of view, I get it. It is easy to mistake Bo Schembechler and Mark D'Antonio, except like one actually won his bowl games he went to, and the other one didn't, and... Jim must have thought that it was D'Antonio that covered up for his team doctor and friend, kind of like Bo did. And, uh, well, he also must have thought Bo was the one that kicked players off his team in 2016 before the investigation even got off the ground. Oh, wait, no, that was actually Mark D'Antonio doing due diligence right off the bat. It, it does get a little confusing here, and they're a confused bunch over there. And then after I pointed that out, Mark D'Antonio, he actually broomed his players out in 2016 before anyone could even tell him what to do. Uh, Brad from Brighton shared this headline from a free press article in 2018. It reads, Michigan State, Mark D'Antonio, and a cloud of sexual assaults. That's right, 2018. That's after 2016. Now, I know that asking some people over there to read is already an arduous task to begin with. That was probably too big of a word for our guy over there. So I'm going to help, you know, actually read past the headline and tell you what was in this story from 2018. They highlighted four incidents with sexual assault filings or complaints. So let's just go down the list here. Incident number one, under Mark D'Antonio's watch, player was kicked off the team immediately. All right, I, I guess Mark D'Antonio could have assassinated him. Uh, but yeah, I thought that kicking the kid off the team immediately, probably an appropriate response. Uh, case number two, okay, it was thrown out. Lack of evidence, there was a third-party witness that said it was consensual. Now, what could D'Antonio have done in that? I guess he could have hopped on as a witness and said, no, it wasn't consensual. I think that'd be pretty bizarre for a man that wasn't even there. Uh, case number three. Well, God, Mark, uh, this was a complaint that was filed 10 years after the incident. So Mark really should have made a time machine, travel back in time to suspend the players. How could he not even do that? And then number four, it was the Keith Mumphrey incident as well, who this happened after his playing time was over at Michigan State. He was immediately expelled from the school. So come on, Mark, where are you there? Uh, well, how dare you not kick a player off your team who's already run out of eligibility? And oh, by the way, Keith Mumphrey has been reinstated at Michigan State University to finish his program. So, no, it's just uh, great, great work by uh, Michigan fans altogether. Just uh, 
trying to accuse Mark of something that didn't really happen or just pointing out at stuff that did happen. Like MGo blog, fantastic work, probably inside the halls of Shem Beckler Hall, published this piece too. They're pointing out the Delton Williams incident where he waved the firearm around and wasn't suspended, which I agree he should have been suspended, but uh, that's strange. It's almost like, uh, wasn't there an incident last year in Ann Arbor that had to deal with a firearm and I don't know, was he suspended? Uh, maybe I'm getting a little foggy with the details. Or, hey, like Chris L. Rucker, 15 years ago, got sent to jail. Didn't miss any time. Played immediately against Iowa after that. And I, I disagree with that. I think he should have been suspended. But it is rich coming from the fine folks in Shem Beckler Hall, Ann Arbor, that we're going to throw stones inside this glass house. Just thinking that we all forgot about what happened seven months ago with Mozzie Smith. Oh, Oh, he was picked up from jail and made kickoff of the next game as well. I, I wonder why they don't have an issue with that. Or my favorite one, MGo Blog. Thank you for pointing out the LJ Scott traffic violations. That's right. They they should have hung him in Town Square for driving with a suspended license. I don't know what else you want. They suspended him for a play, which is one play more than a lot of your players get for doing anything. Just go ahead and ask Mozzie Smith one more time. But yeah. Real, real good work fighting the good fight over there in Ann Arbor. So, all right, we're going to be talking with Tony Lippett here in the hot segment first. Need to talk your ears off about Game Time. It is the best ticketing app in the world. Please use it for this Saturday. They have the best flash deals, the best last-minute ticket deals. They are so easy to buy. It is two taps, and the tickets are sent directly to your phone. You're not going to rummage through your email when there's no service outside of Spartan Stadium and you're just looking like a fool. Now, these, these tickets are zapped right to your phone, sent directly to you. You never have to dig through your email. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College. That's all in word Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. We are now joined by friend of the show. That's right, second appearance. Also, more importantly, Rose Bowl champion, Big Ten champion, just one of my all time favorite players, Tony Lippett. Welcome back to the show, man. How on earth have we been? Hey, man, you've been good, man. Thanks for having me. Sure. Oh, dude, thanks a lot for joining. Really appreciate you. Um, we're going to get into everything going on this weekend. Uh, Harlan Barnett coaching Mark D'Antonio back on the sidelines. But first, we're, we're trying to get you paid over there, Tony. Uh, this Friday, Laurel Park Plaza. That's right. From 630 to 745. You're doing an autograph signing. $25 per autograph. Dude, I mean, like, does it ever get old just like hearing from fans and, you know, wanting to, to sign a few things? Uh, no, I, I haven't really I haven't done really that. Really we, uh, for a while, wow. since last, last season, season. season. It's good to see some familiar faces. faces. Yeah. And, you know, take you know, take uh, some things. Um, relive that experience. Relive that experience. All good. Appreciate everybody. Appreciate everybody. Can't take it. 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 Can't take Hey, that's a picture signed by Tony Lippett. Check that out. That's that's a lot of fun here. Uh, and over here, this mini helmet signed by Tony Lippett. How many things am I allowed to have behind me before you file a restraining order? Is it is this already too much, or am I allowed like one other thing behind me here? Hey man, whatever you want me to sign, man. Like you good with me? I ain't tripping. Love it. And so let, let's get into this weekend. And look. We agreed on this conversation. You were very generous to say, yeah, sure, let's join Monday. That was late last week. Some things have changed in East Lansing, Tony. I'm not sure if you've read the news, but hey, Harlan Barnett, Mark D'Antonio, they're back on the sideline. When you hear that your two old coaches are going to be in action coaching here, I mean, of course, Harlan Barnett already on the staff, elevated the head coach. What's your first reaction when you saw that? I say, man, wow. wow. Like, I never thought, I never thought that would happen. We had a coach that coached for 10 years. 10 years. You wouldn't think this would happen. A thing. a thing. So, so, I mean, it's new to it's, it's new, it's new, new to me. It just, just happened. Happen happen but um, but, um I'm, grateful I'm grateful that Coach Barnett got to the post university. university. Really 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 gonna love oh, him. Yeah. Love Coach, when I was when I was Spartan dog, out. dog out. he knows what he he's doing. What he doing. I I with play, play, tour, the energy, the energy, and he's smart. Smart. 
play the game, play the game. so he know. So he know. And having a coach, having a coach, man, that's man, that's, that's special, special, right? Special, right? Coach D is one of the coaches. Um, um, uh, uh, knows about knows about uh, up and down, up and down for offense, for defense, 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 and he connects. He connects as well. As well. It's gonna be it's good. It's gonna be good. Familiar face, familiar face, back on back the on the side. With Coach D, with Coach D. Like, I never thought I never thought I would wanted to, you know, wanted to, you know, coach. right. But, um, <laughs> but, um, I, I, like two years, like two years, it was a spring, was a spring, talking to talking him, to him. He was talking, he was about, talking about, 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 he was talking about, he was talking about, about uh, uh, over there, over there, over there, something like that. Like like oh, oh, but so I but knew, so I knew, wanted to get to get back, get back. I mean, it's great. I mean, it's great. Last time, last time. Is, I'm, 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 I'm. Congratulations, congratulations coach. coach. Uh, speaking I'm on speaking it. on it. Congratulations, congratulations coach. coach. I know you're gonna do. Know your, you're gonna do your. Uh, uh, it's be it's good. Be good. With all the former, all the former. We already, we know. already know. Know what he about. Know what he about. We know what coach. Know what coach. Did. What he about. What he about. Michigan, Michigan State. State. Guys are. Guys are. If we was in if good, we was in good. I think we're. I in think we're in. Good. So. so. I'm excited. I'm excited how this turns, how this turns out. out. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge. And, um, and, um, so do you think that he's had the itch to come back like the last time you talked to him, or do you think he was enjoying retirement? Because like that that's one thing that I'm just fascinated about. He like he seemed very happy in retirement, but man, like it, it's it's hard to completely shake the competitiveness out of a dog like that. So like do you, do you think he's he was just ready to, to get back here? I, I think so a little bit. I think like when you retire, like a year or two, you go out and do things you want to do. You want to retire, you want to travel, go watch a kid game for time. Yeah. And then it gets to, man, I miss you. Affected, yeah. affected a, a, a large group, a large group. I miss being on the sideline, coaching. I miss it. I miss because it's like it's just like it's a sub you have. You have. Feel me like it don't go no go no. If you really, if you really game, 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 love the game, love the game, hard to, hard to all the way, all the way. I mean, you see, you owner, see owner, 70, 80, 70, 80 oh, they oh, can't, they can't team because, yeah. because they love, they the love the game. They into it, into it. So. I think he had, I think it, he had it a couple years, couple of, years of, 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 but, but back and he's back ready, and he's ready, and he's ready, and he's to, ready to make the program. Make the program. Still plenty more to come with our guy, Tony Lippett, here. Just need to talk your ear off about FanDuel Sportsbook. It has been a roaring start to the season thanks to FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's right. Just pay 5 and then you'll get 200 in bonus bets. It's that simple. Plus, all customers, not just the new ones, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel for the NFL season, college football season. We got the Ryder Cup on the horizon as well. The app is super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads, player props, and more. I had a hoot and a half NFL weekend one with the same game par lasers. Always fun bets to be had at FanDuel Sportsbook. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of all these great offers. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you will not want to miss it's FanDuel official partner of the NFL now just let's let's talk about Saturday Rose Bowl reunion uh and also 10 years ago you hear that the Rose Bowl happened 10 years ago what's what's your reaction does it seem a lot closer than that does it seem about 10 years or like I, I gotta know from your point of view man I mean it's it, 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 man, man. Feel like it was like four years ago, five years ago, yesterday. It don't feel like ten. Ten seems so long. When you in the moment in 2013, you I know you can. Ten years from now, this is gonna be crazy. Oh yeah. Ten years from now, ten years from that moment. We here now. Actually, ten years from the time we want to grow. And somebody, somebody, you know, you know, five years, seven years. Some of the guys, some of the guys, yeah. Since you left, Kent, you left Kent. so it's right. So it's like it's gonna be a big, gonna be a big familiar faces. It's a it's a legendary win. Legendary win. So it's like so something. It's like that something. Us together, together, together. Hide it. Hide it. And it's just gonna be. It's gonna be. Oh, it's a great game. Great game. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 
And when that game happens, of course, ever since then, the last 10 years, I think about the game at least once a week, like a normal, healthy individual, you know, but it was one of the best highlights of all time for us state fans. And of course, I remember the touchdowns, your touchdown grab, of course, the stop and forth and one. That's all stuff we saw like at the game or on television. What, what memories do you have of the Rose Bowl experience that didn't take place on the field that you think about? Um, I was, I was traveling, traveling there. there. We won the big championship. We knew that we was going to the Rose Bowl. A lot of guys, have, you know, we always talk. And you know, you 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 can't really see it. Once we got there, the whole practice. I mean, it was just amazing. Just being with the guys. We was what downtown, literally right next, right next to the center. Yeah. So it was just locked. So like we actually. Envisioned, envisioned it. it. We actually we been actually talking, talking about here and here, out and here, out here, and, and that, that, that was the whole thing. thing. Dang, the whole, the whole, the whole of that, of that. Just being, being in the locker room, room and after practice, 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 Especially some ours some ours on the lead. We, we, we like our hour. Last time we got, we got all, together. all together. Because people, because people leave. leave. Yeah. yeah. So, so just being just in that being lock, in that hour, 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 hour and a half point each other, each other laugh, laugh, smiling, smiling, dancing. dancing. That's one of that's the most, most awesome 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 awesome. I felt the same way, and I was just in the student section for that game. Like I, I didn't want to leave either. Like we, we were gonna shut the place down, but when, as a player, did you feel like comfortable about the game and that you guys were going to win? Because you know, us fans, like we're we're on pins and needles all game. But there's a quote from Pat Narduzzi a few years after that, or maybe it was right after. I'm not sure, but he said, "Hey, uh, they got the stop on fourth and one. Kyler Ellsworth makes a tackle." And Pat Narduzzi was asked, uh, "Like, what would have happened after that? Were you nervous during that play?" And he said, essentially. No, even if they got the first down, they weren't going to score anyway. He seemed pretty comfortable uh, in the fourth quarter here. When when did the comfort set in for you? Was it like until the clocks hit zeros, or was it maybe like when you grabbed that touchdown? I mean, um, I would say, I would say man, before the game, before the game I was real confident. Real confident. Feel, me like, feel me like we played against Ohio State. State. Nobody, Nobody had us beat them. Yeah. Like, like Ohio State Ohio was State five, five plus. plus they had Austin, like, Austin, like a couple. Like, and they were just, just hitting them to the road, them to the, road, them to yep. the, nap, to the nap. So we so all, we all this, this dog, dog mentality. Mentality. We, know we know we know we threats, threats out here. Out here. So, so I would say, I would say the, the, oh, it, oh, the game, the game, the game balance is up. Go up, 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 peak, up, peak, up, 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 the fourth down, the fourth down touchdown, touchdown. McGarry King, King turn back, turn back in the fourth quarter, like right, like right, 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 the best, the best at, at um, uh, and we knew and we, we could, knew we could do because we was battles, we was battles at, and we just, and knew, we like, just knew like if we don't beat if our, we don't beat our, we can make the play, make the play. If we do if what we, we do, we did how we compete how we against, compete each, against other, each other. It was gonna be it great. Was gonna be great. Place to win. Place to win. I would say our, I would say our com- entire time, entire time. We, we never got we down. Never got down. Like I said, like we could have paint. When Con Con was about to throw the ball. Six, six. We were down we seven. Down seven. We could have panicked, mm-hmm. panicked, man. But we did. We did. We do what we do. We, 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 we knew what type of. 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 And we knew we were. We knew we were special. I would say. I would say we. Just the whole thing. We practiced those. Practice those. The big plays. Big plays. We practiced. We practiced that. The payout score. Payout score. We practiced that. We practiced that. Tyler jumping. Tyler jumping. We practiced that. Practiced that. It went the it same. Went the same. It wasn't that. It wasn't new. that new. I had to go out there. Go out there. Like, gotcha. That's amazing. How how long did that celebration last when you guys? I mean, not just in Pasadena, but when you guys came back to East Lansing, like 
because obviously after games you get the 24 hour rule but if it's your last game of the season then okay you get to celebrate a little longer but when did you guys start to make the switch like all right it's, it's time to focus on 2014 which was another good season like there wasn't much of a hangover after that so how long did the party continue for you guys in east lansing upon return man <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, all the way to all the way probably, uh, winter condition <laughs> The the, the the first second week of February because January we, we was we was having fun we was oh yeah we was enjoying enjoying we were still going to class but we had to go to class we would feel like it does had been 25 25 since we won the road bowl yeah um um we've been knocking on knocking on one the big ten one some but this was like this was like. Na- a national, Na- a national, sh- for the, na- yeah. for the national, sh- Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl, and- uh, uh, talked about, talk about that. When it's Rose, when it's Bowl. Rose Bowl. So, so it was so it much, was so much. We definitely we have, definitely have for that whole, for that whole story. story. <laughs> I think, I think- yeah. And like, I hate to sound like an old man, but like, that's also when the Rose Bowl was truly the Rose Bowl. You know, you didn't have the college football playoff and everything. Like it was, it was, you know, the, the tradition unlike any other, it was fantastic. Uh, Tony, first of all, thanks a lot for your time, man. This has been great. Uh, always love chatting with you. One of my all time favorite Spartan players, but I got to ask the question on everyone's mind going into this Saturday, rich homie Quan, will he be there? <laughs> yes or no. Do you have any insight? Hey, Hey, I know, I know some people. Know some people. We are gonna keep it on the hush. On the hush. Who, knows, Who man? knows, man? We go Saturday, Saturday man. man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we go. <gonna laughs> <see, man. laughs> Not a no. So <laughs> that's notable. That that's gonna that's gonna create headlines here. That's right. We're gonna we're gonna turn the news cycle from Michigan State after that answer right here. Rich homie quad alert potentially on Saturday. We'll we'll see. But uh. Uh, Tony, always great chatting with you, man. Uh, hopefully we get to talk to you throughout the season. Um, definitely plenty to talk about with Michigan State here. But uh, anything else you want to say before we let you go and start enjoying your Rose Bowl reunion week? Hey, man, shout out to the Spartans. Y'all been, been, been playing good. Been playing good. Like the quarterback play. Like the, play, yeah. like the defense. Like the defense. Um, um, keep y'all heads up. Fall out the team. Um, we got you. We the players. We know We know how it go. We got y'all. We got y'all. Y'all, man. Y'all, man. Our nation, we nation, we dogs with y'all, with y'all, with y'all, 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 you know. Uh, yeah. But let's just but come, let's just come, we, we, and for the rest of the rest of the years, man, years, let's, man, let's, let's just keep let's it just pushing, keep, pushing, keep, pushing, keep grinding, keep grinding, get right back, get to right the back part, to the part, part, way, part, part. Part. That's all I got. There we, all I got. there we go. That's what I'm talking about, man. And gang, you already know we do this five days a week here locked on Spartans. Tomorrow's show, Graham Couch is going to join the mix. We're going to talk about everything that's going on. And then, yes, later on, we, we will talk about this Washington game. We're going to break it down with locked on Huskies. But, Tony, thanks again, my man. You're the best. Again, Friday, 630 Laurel Park Plaza, $25 per autograph from a Rose Bowl legend. All right. Until next time, love you all. Go Green.